So we should definitely keep in mind that Ensign has from from kings to knights, maybe checks back kings and queens with a certain frequency as well. But I think he would also be floating with a hand like six five suited, seven five suited, king five suited, nine eight suited, all these sort of hands. And that's where I actually like Marchington set second barrel quite a lot because Ensign is going to fold all these hands. I want to share my thoughts on the hand between Hossin Ensign and Marshington in the WCP main event this year. And there were two of the biggest stacks. In fact, I think it was chip leader against second chip leader. Ensign opens the cutoff with ace five off and Marshington defends his big blind with 10 do suited. And first of all, I want to give Marshington a lot of credit for bluffing here. I know it looks very spew, it looks very punty, but Ensign is going to have a lot of one pair hands that he's probably not going to call the river with. So, so yes, it looks spewy. Yes, it looks like a misstep. But at the end of the day, you should also keep in mind that, let's say, if Ensign folds his ace, ace queen, ace jack, then suddenly everyone says, oh, what a genius, what a brilliant play. Of course, it looks a little out of line, but these guys have been playing together for many, many dear days. So you should definitely not judge it right away. You should always try to think about it. And I would always say that someone that is more on the aggressive side, side will have more deep runs. And I'm pretty sure that Marchington didn't gain this huge amount of chips by just playing small ball poker and just playing his value hands. Of course, this time it went wrong, but let's go from street to street. Preflop, it looks very standard to me. Ace-5 off, uh, off suited open from the cutoff, 10 do suited, totally fine hands to defend with. And the flop comes Ace-8-5, of course, very, very good board for Ensign. He goes ahead and c bets a little bit more than one third pot. I would go for one third pot, but not huge deal. Marchington, though, he goes for a check race. and. Actually, I don't mind it. Why? So if you break down the theory, if you would pull up Pyro Solver, if you would plug in the numbers, you would see that against the check race, Ensign is supposed to defend a decent amount of suited broadways, hands like Jack-10, 10-9, Queen-Jack, King-Queen, King-Jack suited with back to flush draw. Um, floating with these sort of hands is what I would expect in a main event tournament not going to happen. So this is definitely not such a bad play as it looks in hindsight. So he might already generate immediate profit. And also on the other side, it's not a board where Ensign should be c-betting his entire range. He has a lot of these middling hands like King, Queen, King, Jack, Queen, Jack, that will have, have a hard time continuing in many turns. Um, in fact, they will never improve to back to flush draws, open and straight draws. So they will barely win on the showdown. That means that Ensign is supposed to be also checking back some of these hands. So if Marching knows that he's just going to see bit everything, that is even better for his check race. So I'm pretty sure he, he had some thoughts behind his race and it was just not randomly picked. And unfortunately, Ensign in this time had a two pair hand and the turn gives Marchington a bottom pair. So he at least picks up some equity against two pairs. If Enzan has an ace king, ace queen type of hand, he even picks up more equity. And I believe that Ensign, if he would see bet in eight, pocket nines, pocket tens, he would call this race at least once. That's totally standard. And I would expect him to do the same here in a main event tournament. So we should definitely keep in mind that Ensign has from from kings to knights, maybe checks back kings and queens with a certain frequency as well. But I think he would also be floating with a hand like six five suited, seven five suited, king five suited, nine eight suited, all these sort of hands. And that's where I actually like Marchington set second barrel quite a lot because Ensign is going to fold all these hands. So yes, he still has all the ace six hands in his range and they will probably, if not 100%, keep calling. 
but on the other side all these under pairs, second pairs, third pairs and he also protects himself for the ca in the case that Ensign did a loose float with a jack 10 suited type of hand. Keep in mind in a GPV environment you're supposed to be calling this hand. So we should definitely also consider ICM here and I think that makes it even more likely that Ensign is going to fold all the broadways on the flop right away and also probably going to fold all the 8x and 5x hands on the turn as well. This will generate a lot of fold equity for Marchington's hand here um, and also blocking ace dues as a potential caught on hand in Ensign's range is not too bad. So actually here the flop play and turn play given how people play against races I really don't mind it. If you look into the theory, if you look into Pyrosolver and you see how your opponent is actually supposed to be sticky against the race this will never happen and this incentivize, incentivize us to play the, um, the big blind here a little more aggressively also with hands that might not look like clear races at first however the river gets very dicey and this is the street where i'm not a big fan of his bet i think now we're bluffing into a range where yeah ensign is going to have a lot of ace x hands and if he has ace king ace queen he might very often just click the call button i'm not judging it i'm definitely not saying it's bad because first of all if ensign would have had ace nine ace jack and he folds Everyone would be saying, oh, what a genius play. Um, I would probably give up on the river because I just think that Ensign is going to call too often or in general, people are a little bit too sticky on ace high boards. So on average, I prefer having a value hand more often. I like his flop play. I, th I like his turn play. Um, or let's say... Not necessarily I'm liking it because I don't really know how Ensign plays. It also really depends on my opponent's strategy. So let's say Ensign was constantly checking a lot as prefer progressor, right? Then I don't like his plays. So if Marchington had to read that Ensign was seabedding almost every single time and yeah, then of course he even has more weaker pairs on the turn, then I like his play. So I don't try to not... Um, make my opinion clear here i just want to guy make you aware of the fact that it really depends on how you uh, on, on who you're playing against so i definitely understand his reasoning i i understand his thought process and i'm not a big fan though of his river play because i as you guys might know how i approach the game i'm not a big fan of bluffing into a range of yeah, that is top pair plus. I love bluffing when my opponents have a lot of weak hands, under pairs, middling hands and put apply, apply a lot of pressure on, on these kind of hands because I know in theory, theory they're still supposed to be calling a lot of these hands against bets and raises in certain spots. This is one of the spots in where I believe that my opponent is going to fold more often on the flop, more often on the turn. That's where I really like um, applying pressure and I really like Marchington's approach here. But on the river, I think he should just slow down. However... All in all, I think um, he shows some guts. He, sh he he plays it a little different. I I I personally believe um, he's one of the favorites for winning the main event. Even though he has not the big stack, but he will pick up his spots. He knows how to apply pressure, and I think that's also the best approach how to win the main event. That's my opinion on this hand. If I would be bluffing on the river here, I would probably. Uh, pick a hand that blocks the ace fives and pocket fives i mean i'm not going to raise an eight i might be, be raising some four five six five seven fives um definitely at least blocking the ace five this would be the first hands i would be yeah considering bluffing on the river depending on how ensign plays or depending on on um how my opponent plays i i probably would also be maybe not bluffing at all so I don't want to rely on what is my opponent capable of. If he's not capable of folding, then yeah, you're gonna you, you're gonna destroy your tournament here quite often. So again, um, if marching had to read, then it's a fine play. I uh, definitely like his flop and turn play. Pre-flop pretty standard on the river. I I would probably not go for a bluff. However, um, shows he has some balls and he has a story to tell. Definitely big credits for him to pull up this bluff and yeah, hope he's gonna run very deep at the final table. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick breakdown of this hand between two of the biggest stack at the main event. 
If you guys have any questions, let me know. Best would always be to come and join our Discord. Lots of engagement there. If not, drop it in the comments. Good luck at the tables. Enjoy watching the WCP main event final table. And let me know who you think is going to win and who you're rooting for. Good luck, guys. See you. Bye-bye.